good day everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to a new review. For today I have a tablet that's also a TV box, this is called the Pipo X10. First of all we have a 10.8 inches display with a 1080p resolution on the front so that makes it look like a tablet, however it's not as light and as portable as a tablet. The Pipo X10 it's running Windows 10 and Android 5.1 and for specs we have an Intel CPU, it's an Intel Z8300, we have 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. The screen has decent sensitivity and it does get rather bright, however there is a lot of reflection um, on the screen if you are in a room with a lot of lights, so keep that in mind, it's better to use this in a darker environment. If you check the specifications for this device you are gonna notice that it says that it's got a 10,000 milliamp battery inside. Well I took this apart earlier today because I was very curious to see what's inside. So first of all I found um, a fan, so we have a fan uh, inside there and the fan does run uh, pretty much all the time whenever the screen is on, so keep that in mind. It's not that loud but um, if you are in a very quiet environment, so for example at night time you are gonna be able to hear the fan. Now about that battery, so the 10,000 milliamp battery that uh, we are supposed to have inside this device, it's actually a 5,000 milliamp battery and that is a bit shady. Well, that being said, um, you can still get about 4 hours of screen on time um, on Windows with this uh, tablet with that 5,000 milliamp battery that we have inside. Let's start by taking a closer look at this tablet. So on the right hand side you're gonna find the power button, you're also gonna find the volume keys and two USB ports and one of those USB ports is actually a USB 3. Next to that you're also gonna find a 3.5mm audio jack so you can connect like headphones or some speakers or anything like that. But we do have dual speakers on this device, so one of the speakers is sitting on the right hand side and the other speaker is sitting on the left hand side and I have to say that they do sound rather loud. On the back of the device we have a rather large uh, Wi-Fi antenna, but I guess that's good um, if you're far away from the wireless router. Aside from that you're gonna find a slot for a micro SD card, you're gonna find two other USB ports, the HDMI, the network adapter port and the power adapter port. We also have some holes at the back and on the bottom of the device so it doesn't overheat, but keep in mind that we have that fan running inside this, um, so most likely it's not gonna overheat. Now that we've seen how this looks on the outside and on the inside, and I have to say that the insides don't look that um, amazing, they actually look fairly cheap and I'm kind of afraid uh, of what would happen if I would actually drop this. So now that we've seen all that, I'm gonna start recording the screen, we'll do some benchmark tests, um, I'll show you the speeds for the internal uh, storage, I'll show you the speeds for the Wi-Fi, we'll try some video files and so on. So let's uh, start doing that. First of all, when you turn on this device, you're gonna have the option to actually choose between Android 5.1 and Windows 10. And for the duration of this video, I'm mostly gonna show you Windows 10. I'll still show you a couple of things for Android, but um, you'll mostly see Windows 10. So let's start by going to Start here, and here we'll go to Settings. We're just gonna show you a couple of things um, around here. So if we go to About, we can see that uh, this device is using uh, Windows 10, the Home Edition. And this is the CPU that we have and uh, the 4 gigs of RAM. For battery here, um, there isn't that much that uh, I can show you because I kept charging this uh, and using it uh, throughout the day. And uh, for storage here, uh, I'm just going to show you the available space, but uh, we'll go into Windows Explorer shortly. And I'll show you how much space we have available. I have a couple of things uh, installed, so um, I'm taking some space out of the space that uh, we get. So we have about 10 gigs left uh, out of the allocated space for Windows, so not that much um, free space available on this. However, you can always install um, an external hard drive, and I did try an external hard drive, and it um, seems to work on any USB port um, on this device. And going back to the settings um, here for a quick second, um, at update and security you can uh, get updates for this device and uh, I did get a whole bunch of updates, it was doing updates uh, for the past 3-4 uh, um, hours. So there are updates uh, that uh, you will get for Windows all the time. And if we click on activation here, um, it's going to tell you that um, this is an uh, activated license and it actually works, so it's a real um, Windows license. Of course you have access to the Windows Store, so you can just open the Windows Store and uh, basically install any apps uh, from here and I actually installed Kodi from here and I installed uh, a game from here as well yesterday. Uh, unfortunately you're only gonna be able to connect to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi networks um, on the Windows side. 
and let's check out some speeds over Wi-Fi and over a wired connection. The speeds that I got over a wired connection are rather decent, so about 94 download for a wired connection and about 30 to 37 um, on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network, so the speeds are rather decent. It's worth mentioning that sometimes whenever you plug in a cable um, into a network adapter port, um, the network adapter port doesn't uh, recognize that uh, you actually have a cable plugged in, so there may be a hardware um, issue with this uh, particular device, or maybe all of them have it, but sometimes you have to play with that um, cable in there, like take it out, put it back in, um, so you can actually get it to work. For our first benchmark test, uh, we get a score of about 615, and this is actually better than a lot of mini PCs that I've tested, because most of them have about 500, so I'm happy to see this score for this uh, mini PC. So we'll uh, press OK here. So let's close this. And let me maximize this. And if I go to home here, uh, we can uh, press on each component and see what it is. So this is the graphics card. I'll go back. This is uh, the storage. So we have uh, a Samsung uh, storage in here. We also have this motherboard, we'll go back, um, this is the CPU, so the CPU that uh, we already knew, and I believe that's, uh, that's all that we have, uh, and lastly the RAM of course. So a rather decent score uh, for this particular uh, device, and this is the temperature for the CPU at this particular time, and keep in mind that the fan uh, it's uh, working all the time. And moving on to the Geekbench 4 here, we get some decent results as well. So we get a multi-core score of about 2100 and a single core score of about 859. And down here we can see some more uh, details about uh, the device. And moving on to the speeds for the internal storage, even though not amazing, rather decent for a device like this. Moving on to a quick YouTube uh, test, so here I have a 4K video, uh, keep in mind that I'm using Microsoft Edge, so I'm not using Chrome, uh, and I'm just going to play this, it's uh, currently at 1080p, if you move uh, further up at uh, 2K or 4K it doesn't uh, go good at all, but around 1080p and 720p it does seem uh, to do fairly good. So I'm going to press play, we'll uh, maximize this on the screen so you can uh, have a better uh, idea how uh, how well it does uh, at 1080p. And as you can probably tell, it does uh, do very very smooth uh, at 1080p. Keep in mind that if you're going to be using Chrome, it doesn't actually go that smooth uh, with Chrome. It only works good um, if you're using Microsoft Edge. So yeah, very very good uh, results for YouTube at 1080p. Next I'm going to show you a couple of video files so you can have a better idea how um, well they do. This is the first one that uh, we're going to try. And uh, we'll just use uh, the Windows Media Player. It takes a while to start, but uh, after it starts, uh, most files, except 4K files, uh, do go very, very well. So I'm just going to skip forward, and as you can probably tell, uh, it does uh, work very good. And the image is uh, quite clear as well. So moving on to the next file that um, I want to show you. So this one here uh, will also do good. And we'll skip to the next uh, file. And this 4K file will not work, so you're gonna see how, uh, how it does. So it's in super slow motion, but uh, that's quite normal for this uh, CPU. So yeah, nothing is happening. I'm gonna skip the next uh, 4K file at 50 frames per second because it's the same thing. So basically any 1080p and 720p files will do good. And if you actually use Kodi, you can even get uh, DTS and Dolby Digital uh, out of uh, this device and uh, it does sound uh, very good and the sound doesn't cut in and out. So you can uh, use it as a media center as well. So that was a 720p file. We'll also try this one here. So this one uh, works good as well. 
this one uh, will also work good, uh, so nothing uh, special about this one. And I'll skip forward a bit. So for sure, uh, most files that um, you're gonna try on this device uh, will, uh, will do just fine. And this is the last one uh, that I will be trying. All right, next uh, I'm gonna open Kodi and uh, we'll uh, find a random stream and we'll see how well it does. So we have Kodi 17 um, installed on this device uh, and I installed this right from the Windows Store so I didn't actually have to do anything. So let me go to add-ons here and here let's find something from here. And Kodi does work uh, really, really good. Of course, it takes a while uh, for um, whatever uh, stream uh, that you're going to open, depending on the quality and the uh, stream and so on. But um, it does uh, seem to work uh, very good on this. So again, you can use this as a... Uh, so as I was saying, it does uh, do very good. Uh, so you can uh, use this as a media center, uh, very good uh, to access all your files and uh, see stuff online, basically. So this is how uh, Kodi 17 uh, works, uh, and I, I can even show you, let me just go back. I can even show some information about uh, Kodi, so like the RAM uh, and so on. So if we go to settings here and system information, we can see that we have about 2.5 uh, gigs of uh, available RAM. And uh, that's the usage for the CPU down there. So that's how uh, Kodi works uh, on this device. And for our last uh, test uh, for Windows, um, I'm just going to play Asphalt Extreme for uh, a bit. So you can have a better idea how um, well it does. I did play it uh, a couple of times and it does work uh, very, very good. So small games like this one will uh, also do good on this uh, mini PC and you can actually use uh, and play this uh, just to the tablet and you can like uh, move left, right uh, and it will work uh, like that. Uh, now I'm going to be using uh, a keyboard but uh, yeah you can definitely use just the tablet uh, to play this. So let's uh, start playing the game. And as you can probably tell, um, it does uh, work fairly good. So quite surprising uh, when you think of the CPUs that we have inside uh, these uh, mini PCs because they're not the most uh, performant CPUs out there. But a lot of the games uh, that we have are actually optimized for uh, this type of uh, tablets and uh, basically setup. So this is uh, how gaming works uh, on this mini PC. So that was it for the Windows side. To switch to the Android side, um, you actually open this uh, app right here. You're gonna select yes, and then you're just gonna press switch to Android, or you're just gonna turn off uh, the tablet and then turn it back on and select Android. So we'll move to the Android side and I'm gonna show you quickly how that looks. So this is how the Android side looks like. So it's basically Android 5.1 without um, any additions um, or anything. So if we go to settings here um, and uh, scroll the way uh, at about tablet, um, we can see the model number, which is the Pipo X10 and the uh, Android 5.1. So as you've seen uh, before, um, we do have um, the Play Store pre-installed. And I'm just going to go to storage here so I can show you how much storage we have left. So we only have about 4.8 gigs um, available, so not a whole uh, bunch. Personally, I prefer using Windows on these uh, mini PCs. However, uh, you do have access to the Android uh, Google Play Store and um, you could install some games and stuff like that uh, from that store. So I guess uh, that's the beauty of these um, dual boot mini PCs. So this is pretty much it for the Android side. I mean, um, you can always install uh, and do some benchmark tests and so on, but um, the benchmark results will be similar uh, with the ones that we've seen over uh, on the Windows side. So definitely a good alternative um, if you just uh, want a different game or an app that um, it's not available for Windows. So something good to have. However, I would have preferred to have those uh, 5 gigs um, 
of uh, storage that um, we have for the Android on the Windows side because um, I do use Windows more uh, than Android on one of these uh, mini PCs. So it really depends uh, on uh, each individual case and uh, what you're using this uh, for. So overall, this is a different uh, looking thing. I mean, it could be used as a tablet, uh, take it to do wherever you go. It is a bit big and uh, I guess uh, it's not that uh, portable and uh, well, realistically, People are going to look at you kind of strange uh, whenever you have this with you. But uh, it could be useful as a media center. For the price though, you can probably get uh, something without a screen if you're planning to use this um, with a computer monitor or a TV. So it really depends uh, how you're going to use this if you find this, uh, this thing useful. That uh, 5000 milliamp battery inside, um, it's a good addition, but I would have preferred to have like a 10,000 uh, milliamp battery as um, the manufacturer actually said. There you have it guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, uh, press that like button, don't forget to subscribe um, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.